with the release of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War quickly closing in, let's go back to one of the best stories and campaigns in the franchise with a brand new goal in mind. Let's see today if we can beat Call of Duty Black Ops using only handguns. The first mission sends us to Cuba, circa 1961, for the Bay of Pigs invasion. We begin with a handgun, which we then use against the local cops. Here I will go ahead and explain the rules of this run for my newer viewers. As usual, I can only use handguns to kill the enemies. I am allowed to use non-lethal equipment, such as flash grenades, as long as they don't kill the target. I may have committed a few hidden runs here. I then get myself a scorpion because I consider it to be a handgun. I disobeyed official orders, grab the forgotten KS-23 shotgun, which is a beast by the way, and we successfully assassinate someone that looks a lot like Fidel Castro. We fight through the big flaming room of fire, patiently wait behind some sandbags for the objective to forward itself, and then sprint to the extraction plane. Now, as with many other Call of Duty on rails and vehicles sections, there's actually no need to expend hundreds of taxpayer dollars on ammo for the belt-fed machine gun here. You can get through this whole part without killing anything. Unfortunately, you are required to use the ZPU to clear a path for the plane, and I'm 99% sure that we killed at least a few people here, so no, you can't beat Black Ops using only handguns, but that's not gonna stop me from getting revenge on this little trio of angry communists. We punch a guard at the beginning of Vorkuta, but I'm pretty sure he's still alive. The next guard is absolutely relentless. I mean, look at this dude. He is so determined to beat me down into the dirt. I had to train him around for like a full minute through the tunnel until the elevator got here. We then end up getting a handgun. I do a lot of killing from behind a minecart, but now we have to destroy three guard towers with this Molotov-type slingshot. As far as I know, this area can't be skipped, and I'm pretty sure there was at least one person dying in one of those towers, so I'm considering this another failed mission. There aren't any more tricky sections, until we come across this helicopter that has to be disabled with a harpoon gun. But he didn't have to fly right into the fuel container, did he? I mean, my conscience is clear, that's not my fault. I exhaust most of my ammo before encountering some old-school juggernauts. I failed my mission here, died quite a few times, and then everyone knows that the handgun beats the death machine in most cases. Now, to my surprise, once again, you can actually sprint through most of this next area without shooting anything or using the minigun. Who would have guessed? We then ride a couple motorcycles away from the gulag, but in an unfortunate twist, while you actually can escape without killing anything, you have to do this truck portion on Recruit to do so. But I mean, most of this level was pretty successful. The third mission is little more than a glorified expositional cutscene with no combat, giving us our first win. After watching the trailer for Sol 9, we're forced to shiv a couple guards to get their uniforms. While clearing the tower is rather simple, we are then forced to defend our friends on the ground by using the explosive crossbow. And before you ask if you can get through this without shooting, you can't. I tried. Admission fails. And then this section adds just a little bit more insult to in-game injury. In the next area, we are given just five minutes to stop a rocket from launching for some reason. I can't really remember. While you do get a handgun, you're forced to shoot down the rocket with the missile launcher anyway. I mean, this mission is really not being very kind to me. We finally catch a little bit of a break in the tunnels, and despite taking quite a few tries, I do eventually have some luck. I was saved by smoke grenades a couple of times, and I also had to drop the difficulty to recruit again, but finally managed to end this nightmare of a level. Now, don't let the helicopter convoy here fool you. This mission really sucks some donkey dong, especially on Veteran. This guy suffered an accidental discharge of grenade, but with patience you can run past everything else. And by the way, that discharge was irrelevant because you have to blow up three tanks with a rocket launcher for reasons. Getting down the hill is somewhat easy. I actually did clear it on my first try. But then the game decided to give me COVID, because it killed me and then reset me to the top of the hill. I consider those to be similar in pain. Seriously though, where are the checkpoints? This is Call of Duty, this is not Dark Souls. So since the game outright refused to give me a checkpoint or a handgun, and I had already failed the mission anyway, I pretty much played up the hill normally, my channel, my rules. 
Oh, and when I actually did get a checkpoint, it came at a very bad time. I did eventually wind up finding a handgun at the top of the hill, and I had it for about 40 seconds, because now I get to blow up six more tanks. Gotta say, this mission hurt a little bit. Our next mission includes a free fire-breathing shotgun, and I don't think you can get through this first building without a kill unless maybe you did it on recruit, but I didn't really bother to try this when I didn't have the patience for it. Reznov shows back up out of nowhere. We are then forced to use the chopper gunner once, though I'm not sure it killed anyone. And then I used the mounted machine gun because I was getting annoyed with this completely forgettable mission. It's probably the most forgettable in this game. Our next level takes place in Kowloon City, the home of dual-wielded pistols, giant armories of questionably usable and legal firearms, slow motion sliding, dead fish all over the floor, a slightly tricky defensive section, and success. That's right, we actually beat this mission under challenge conditions, thankfully. Now we head off to a flashback mission set at the end of World War II. There are quite a few enemies here and not a handgun to be seen. I tried and failed multiple times to make people go into Last Stand, and then I pretty much gave up on this particular mission. Operation Paperclip also somehow managed to miss this one major scientist. The one handgun you do get in this mission of course has to come during the one section where there's no combat. Dimitri forgot to turn off his car while sitting in his garage. We then fight past both the British and Russians at the same time, and in theory this mission might actually be doable because there aren't any sections that explicitly require the usage of something that isn't a handgun. It would come down heavily to luck of being able to find one though, so it might be possible. So as we end the first stream with a little bit of Dead Ops Arcade in the background, we reach the halfway point of the game, actually a little bit further than that. Currently, only two missions have been successful, and one of those was a glorified cutscene. Project Nova is questionable, but the other five are complete and total failures. Not a good start, but honestly World at War's completion was pretty low as well at this point, and it was redeemed in the second half, so we'll have to see. What a nice way to start the second stream. Things are looking up. Oh, never mind. You can't get through this area without shooting the AK-47. I did try about a dozen times at this and did not have any success before anyone asks. Thankfully, we end up regaining control of a handgun here before being forced to slit the throat of a village dweller. Also, don't shoot this guy taking a nap. It doesn't end well for you. I'm going to spare you guys the time and details, as the rest of this mission really wasn't any more successful than the first third. The best weapon I'd found was a scorpion, although the Grim Reaper is still pretty cool. While the tunnels work out in our favor a little bit with access to the powerful python, this mission is pretty much no bueno. Mission 10, Crash Site, is pretty interesting for the challenge. You see, you have this long vehicle section at the beginning, and you can't get through it without shooting, I know that for a fact. So, I assumed that the mission would be an instant failure. But upon a bit of research and re-watching the footage, you'll see that the rockets are not actually launched from the boat, but rather by your squad mates carrying Grim Reapers. I know that you can beat the mission using only rockets, so technically you should be able to get through this without firing a single shot of your own. Upon reaching the shore, we're able to avoid most of the enemy gunfire by hiding in cover, sprint past a number of enemies, and then cower inside the plane during the final battle. WMD is pretty epic, taking control of an SR-71 Blackbird, guiding ground forces to safety amidst dozens of Russians, while interspread with some normal combat sections, which actually involve a suppressed handgun for once. Once again, of course, everything has to go wrong because we have to kill these two guards stealthily and somehow a single shot to the toe is an instant kill. I really disagree with that. After getting the akimbo pistols, we secure the command room, jump off the side of the mountain, and good lord, this is a long mission, I forgot about this. The last area is also pretty straightforward. South Carolina and therefore me survives this, and you can clear the defensive conclusion of this mission without shooting anything. Also, I'm counting this mission as questionable because, in my opinion, a shot to the foot would not be an instant kill, especially out in the snow. So, it's my channel, my rules, what I say goes. We then return to Vietnam, where Bowman is prescribed with death. Handguns make their triumphant return, and then we get the chance to hijack a helicopter. It's pretty cool, but I assume I don't need to spell out what this means for the challenge for this mission. Moving on. Now back on the ground, Reznov conveniently shows up once again, and these must have been some very low-powered grenades. 
Our next destination is Rebirth Island. This is how it begins. I played this section somewhat normally due to already failing the challenge here. It goes by rather quickly that way, and then the real mission begins. We dial the pain up to 11 with a vehicle section that can't be skipped without killing anything. Oh, and then we get to deal with an even more dangerous version of mustard gas. Seriously though, this mission is cancer when it comes to challenge conditions. It's one of the hardest missions on Veteran for a reason. Why not throw in some helicopters at this point, honestly, you've given us everything else. This mission endgame, though, is pretty cool, and was a huge shock to us 10 years ago when we first saw it. More plot twists occur as we enter the penultimate mission, Revelations. It actually features no combat, and it has a lot of story exposition. I won't spoil any of it for you if you still haven't played the game after all these years, but just note that we finally had another successful mission. Time to roll into the finale. Okay, it starts like this. Honestly, at this point I'm really not all that surprised or even disappointed anymore because the whole run has basically been this way. And yes, you do actually have to kill some stuff here. <sighs> no surprise here. We finally luck out and get a handgun in the underwater area. Make that three, actually. We then kill a discount juggernaut, drown the final boss in what looks like about six inches of water, and we quite obviously did not even come close to beating Black Ops 1 using only handguns. Well, this run was something. It certainly was something. I don't know what that something was. I mean, it's not like I expected it to be possible, but I didn't think it would be this bad. Of the game's 15 missions, only three are completely doable, including two that are basically just cutscenes. Nine of them are impossible. That's a lot. And then there are three that are questionable, including WMD, because I still disagree with that one part. This puts Black Ops 1 all the way at the bottom of the list with only a 20% success rate. However, it could be bumped up to a maximum of 40%, depending on those three questionable missions. Now, despite all the challenge failures, I still love Black Ops 1. It has a fantastic campaign, fantastic story, memorable characters, a really fun zombies mode, and a multiplayer that I played like crazy back in the day. Thank you all for watching. Please like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next challenge.